A very warm uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, so we are in the month of uh, September and uh, I think a lot of us over here, a lot of people over here would have had their birthdays in September. Like anybody who's had their birthday in September, if you could just raise your hand. Yes, I can see a few hands here and maybe I can also see a few hands there. Basically, what do people tell us on our birthday? Or what is it that people generally wish for us? And by people, I mean well-wishers. Success, prosperity, fine health, right? All of these wishes or qualities, what are these attributes of? Success, prosperity, fine health, stability, right? What are these attributes of? Fundamentally, all these are ingredients of what we know to be a good life. And I am here to tell you that a good life is the biggest enemy of a great life. So if you get everything on a platter served to you and you are making every right move in your life, it means that something is amiss with you. And in sharp contrast, if you are facing mammoth challenges, it implies that colossal success is in store for you. Trying to apply these kind of ideas and values into our modern society. And let us take the city of Dehradun, since most of you are students from Dehradun. You are in different institutions studying in Dehradun. Many people of this country who have made this country proud have done their schooling from this city. They have made it big in their lives. But let us look at some of the most common problems that face this city of Dehradun. Dehradun, known as the city of grey hair and green hedges today, is struggling to manage its waste. Our environment, our biodiversity, our climate, everything is seeing rapid fall. And you know, when we enter into these discussions with our family, with our friends, when we talk amongst ourselves with regard to what is happening to our city? Everybody is sad, everybody is gloomy, everybody is nostalgic. They remember what was the Dehra of Ruskin Bond. However, friends, and here I speak directly to each one of my young friends, this is a beautiful thing because this is our opportunity to change this. We have to step in here and do it differently from our previous generations from our parents, from our grandparents, and we have to restore all that is going wrong with our own city. And how can we do that? How have I been trying to do, to do that? This is the short journey that I am going to share with you. And going forward from here, I would request all of you to join this journey or to start your own journeys, your own respective journeys, so that we can actually understand that all the problems that we face in our city and even with our province, these are all opportunities for young people to contribute towards making a difference by being the difference. The latter part is very important. We always wish well and we think well, but it is so important that we become a part of the solution side of things and not on the problem side of things. Friends, Life in general is a journey of three I's. The I alphabet, three times over. There is an idea, right? Everything starts from an idea. So you have an I for an idea. Then there is an I which is for implementation. Because an idea by itself is nothing. So there is an I for an implementation. And then one has to ensure that the eye for an idea and the eye for the implementation, they are not connected by an infinity bridge. Because if we just ideate and don't act, or 
if we only act and don't ideate, we do not take anything anywhere. And let me share with you just a few instances of where I think I could act and make my eye for idea and eye for implementation. We've all faced the pandemic of this century, hopefully the only pandemic of this century, because we have seen pandemics have come maybe once in a century. And what we saw with COVID-19, and particularly with the second wave, was absolute anarchy everywhere. People were struggling for oxygen. People did not have hospital beds. I'm sure we all know people who've, who we've lost in this time. As a young attorney practicing at the Uttarakhand High Court, when I was reading all these news articles and when I could see what was happening, and our activist group was actively coordinating with watchmen in various hospitals to find out where is the empty bed, where is the vacant bed. When the district magistrate's office was publishing a list of 10 places from where you could get oxygen cylinders and 8 of those 10 places were locked up, as a young attorney, I was, my heart was wrenching and I was thinking, what is it that I could do? And with both my parents battling COVID on the ground floor, I decided to wear my black robes like a Batman and sit on the first floor and send in a letter petition in a pending public interest litigation on healthcare, attracting the attention of the Honorable the Chief Justice and the Honorable the High Court of Uttarakhand at that time to this problem of oxygen not being available, of wrong information being peddled by none other than the district administration. And that was taken forward. There was a virtual hearing scheduled. The court passed a series of orders and at least oxygen availability was restored and correct status of beds was shown to everybody. Now that resulted in a separate kind of a problem because what did the screen started showing then on available beds? Earlier it was showing wrong figures when you used to log in to the website to see, now it was showing the right figures, which was 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So all those zeros were not helpful. They were quite dark, but they were honest. And sometimes we realize in this journey that the first step to take is the step of honest realization. And as young people, as ambitious people, as energetic people, sometimes we just miss this step. We lead our lives without realization. Everybody talks about saying the right things before you sleep. Friends, also talk to yourselves about your biggest weaknesses, about where you think you can go wrong, or you have been going wrong and how you can correct. So from this journey of oxygen being provided and of hospital beds being made available, I now want to share with you Another such journey, which is possible by young people who are just purpose driven. There was another public interest cause with regard to environmental degradation at a particular stretch of Dune Valley, which is the Sahastradhara stretch. I'm sure some of you would have gone to the beautiful picnic spot of Sahastradhara. During the course of arguments, I thought you know, we can point out with regard to what is happening in the larger Dune Valley and how environmental standards are rapidly falling with regard to the flow of water in our rivers, with the density of our green trees and forests, and all these aspects. So, the Honorable Court was given some literature, the Honorable Court appreciated that literature, and today we have a final order which directs the Chief Secretary of this state to present and prepare a report in every three years on environmental standards of the Dune Valley and of the whole state of Uttarakhand. People have now been working on this. The government has been asked to think permanently on permanent practical possible solutions for these falling values of environmental degradation. So friends, it was always easy, you know, to be in the bar, have the bar, by the bar, I imply the bar of the courts which is called the bar room, to be in the bar, have your chai and just keep criticizing the government and our system and just say, oh, you know, everything is going bad, all trees are going, it is so humid, it is so hot. And it is just 
a different kind of a thrill to try to be on the solution side of things. Another short story to share with regard to what is happening with our river beds, particularly our river streams. So what happens in this city is very well known to those who've been living here for some time. The river beds are often the pattas for the political harvest. So our local netas have gained from it. They bring people, they, get, they first make them settle over there. Then when people settle over there, then there is the river returns to its course. That is called a flood, by the way. The river was only flowing it in its own course. That is called a flood. And then ultimately, uh, the people who are brought there are the ultimate sufferers and so is the ecology. So this kind of a system was hard -wired in, has been hardwired into the Dehradun city. Then what is worse is that you know, there is a riverfront development program where money was invested to build walls instead of rejuvenating an existing river. So all these aspects were again taken to the courtroom. The court has asked the government to prepare reports on all these aspects to bring on record the real situation. And the government then brings on record that as per its assessment, around 203 football fields large area is the encroachment in Dune Valley only on river land. That is around 263 acres. Now that is quite demotivating and that is quite you know, difficult to deal with. However, again, it is an honest realization. It is a realization and it is a step in the right direction which can then lead us towards further solutions. Another very recent example that I can share with you, some of you may have even read of it. This matter is still ongoing, so I cannot you know, comment so much on the merits of the same. However, I'm sure you would have, some of you would have seen the Sehastadhara road, the road widening proposal and the felling of 2,000 trees you know, it is so easy for the authorities and not just the authorities, for all of us to think, oh, we have to widen roads, we need economic development. What is an obstruction? The tree is the obstruction. Friends, we are in an era of climate emergency. We can no longer live in the 18th century era and always regard trees as obstructions. Trees are there, even if they are eucalyptus, they may have some merits. So that kind of a journey, which was a back and forth journey, friends, we were first able to get you know, an interim order to protect those trees. Thereafter, that interim order was modified. We went to the Honorable Apex Court, then came back. In between, in all this journey, half the trees are now gone, but half still remain. Half still remain. And here I remember an anecdote that I had with the concerned petitioner who was talking to me. He said that if we are not able to save these trees, then I want to uh, withdraw my petition because already half the trees are gone. So I asked him, why don't you see that half the trees are still standing there? There is still so much to save. And which is why my humble request to all of you, as I come towards the conclusion of my very short interaction or one-way interaction with you, is to think on which side of the fence you want to be. There is a problem side and everybody is on that side. Please note that everybody inherently is on the problem side of things. And then there is the solution side of things and lesser people are on the solution side of things. When we conduct cleanup drives, a lot of people come to us and pat our back. Achha kaam kar rahe, bahut badhiya, bahut hi achha. Very few actually jump in and clean the river ourselves, themselves. They don't join us, but they offer that lip service. Which is why, friends, I want to conclude by just saying that uh, when I was at Oxford, I had the opportunity to address a gathering in the presence of my vice chancellor, where I was able to say that that experience had taught me that where there is reluctance today, there will be resilience tomorrow. Thereafter, in my first TEDx interaction in Dehradun, I was able to say that where there is resilience today, there will be reward tomorrow. So in this third kind of continuing interaction, I can say that where there is reward today, 
there will be responsibility tomorrow and that responsibility rests on all my young friends here all problems with india all problems with dehradun let us get up and deal with them thank you